to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Make sure you are praying in the spirit. Embrace <laughs> Pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, give me an encounter tonight by your spirit and even by your word. Please lift your voice and passionately cry. Passionately cry for an encounter by your spirit, even by your word. He sent forth his word. It healed them. It delivered them from all their oppression. are open tonight, my ears are open tonight to hear the words of the Spirit. Lord, I came here with a hunger. I came here with a desperation. I came here with an intention tonight to receive, to be transformed, to be lifted, to be blessed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to pray. It is not the word that is available that will change you. It is the word that is accurately taught, understood, received by faith, and applied diligently. That is the word that produces. Proximity to the word does not bring transformation. It doesn't bring result. I'd like you to pray. Father, every familiarity that my mind and the devil will want to bring to your word to your atmosphere i curse it in the name of jesus my heart ever panting for you ever hungry for you lift your voice and pray <laughs> Tell him 
approaching you with the spirit of reverence approaching you with hunger and fire Jesus. Father, it remains an honor. It remains a privilege. We will never take your presence for granted. We will never take the privilege of the gathering of the saints for granted. We worship you like you so deserve. We adore you. We honor you. We decree and declare that you remain Lord over our lives, Lord over this house. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless us tonight. We have come as a confession of our limitation in wisdom. We have come as proof that we remain students in the school of the Spirit. We have come as a communication of our desperation for more, for more, for more more of your wisdom, more of your power, more of your grace, more of knowledge, more of your transforming grace. Help us tonight, Spirit of the living God, we yield ourselves to your influence and we pray that you walk wonders in our midst tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to see everyone again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to please do me a favor by truly appreciating all our precious leaders in this house. Give them a big, big, big God bless you. Ministers, heads of departments, thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Um, You see, the proof of impact is not just the results that are produced from your life. The proof of impact are the results that are produced from your ideologies, even if it is not you. Are we together now? Yes. I have always thought that a good leader is not a leader because he is exceptional as a person. The proof of leadership is the ability to reproduce yourself as much as possible and that there be continuity that does not necessarily depend on you that's leadership and so i thank god for these great people i sincerely appreciate them tonight is one of those teachings that will leave you thinking about your destiny passionately tonight is one of those teachings that the lord will breathe upon that will give us a cause to think. There are not many teachings like this, but every once in a while, God brings truths that help our growth, that help us to relate with the times and give us wisdom. Hallelujah. It was a revelation that God gave me, and I looked forward to having the release. I didn't even know that this would be the first platform I'll be sharing it, and I'm very happy about it. And I know that the Lord is going to bless us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am a student of the school of the spirit. And I am a student of scripture. And scattered across scripture are mysteries and principles. That not only help our revealing Jesus. But it also helps in the glorification of the saints. Jesus himself said... Herein is my Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. It says, when ye bear much fruit. So, the Father is glorified to the degree to which the saints excel. It's not enough that Jesus be glorified alone. He also wants the saints to excel. Are we together? So, I want you to truly pay attention. I'm teaching tonight... On a very deep mystery. This mystery will help you to remain relevant. 
is a mystery in the spirit that helps people to remain relevant regardless seasons, regardless times. Are we together? Yes. There is no guarantee that because you started well, you will finish well. There is no guarantee that that is why God calls himself Alpha and then Omega. He does not only start, he remains. And the Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Hallelujah. So I'm teaching tonight on times and seasons. It's a very deep revelation that will impart wisdom upon our lives. You may argue with opinions, but you cannot argue with results. Results are powerful. There are people today who do not believe in the Lordship of Jesus. Someday, the result that will stand before them, the reality of heaven and hell, will compel them. I am convinced that everybody in hell today intends to believe. But the time allotted for them to believe and accept the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, they exhausted that time. And even though now they still have the faith to believe, the timing does not allow it again. Every time is not convenient for every result. Realities in this kingdom are time dependent and they are also dependent on seasons. In agriculture, we learn that at least for Nigeria, other parts of Africa and the West, they have at least four seasons. But it's not the case for us. We just have two seasons, the rainy season and the dry season. Are we together? You can plant every time. But there are seasons when even the environment supports you. For instance... If you plant during the dry season, you will have to take responsibility for providing water. You will have to outsource an intelligence and laboriously do what the rain would have done for you free of charge. Are we together? But when you sow during the rainy season, you have an advantage of the environmental conditioning favoring that agricultural pursuit. And so every time is not convenient for everything. And if we do not understand the mystery behind times and seasons, you will find out that at the end of your life, you did not do much, both for the kingdom, for yourself, for family, and so on and so forth. The school of ministry has been running now for, I think, this this should be the eighth session. And almost all the students unanimously agree that one of their best in terms of the courses that we teach is called personal transformation. And not because of all of it, but there are a few topics there that just challenge you to think about your life. And I believe that. Value every information that gives you a reason to understand life. Not just God alone. There is Jesus the way, the methodologies of the kingdom. You have to understand this. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 41 contains a very, very interesting story. And in that story is a mystery. The mystery holds the key to transgenerational relevance. Stories in scripture were not just written for nothing it's a long reading be patient stories in scripture were not just for the information regardless the actors there was there was something that was hidden in those stories and the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to open your eyes so that you will see beyond the stories beyond the parables you understand the mysteries 
Are we together now? If you read a Bible story and you do not get the mystery behind it, you have not benefited from that story. If the only thing you know is there was a man called Abraham, for instance, a woman called Sarah, they, they were childless for a long time, then Isaac came, etc. That has not blessed you. That is just a historic information. But when the spirit of revelation comes, it takes you beyond history. It takes you beyond archaeology. It opens up to you something in that story that is consistent with the character of God. And it reveals, it hands over to you a key that helps your excelling in life. Until you find a kingdom key in a story, you have not benefited from it. As far as the study of scripture is concerned. So Genesis chapter 41, the Bible talks about, apologies for the, the, um, the way the projection is looking. But the Bible talks about a young man who, for various reasons, found himself in the prison. And then he was now about to be lifted. And then the Bible says in 41, please give it to us a long reading. The Bible says, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed so it starts with a dream the pharaoh was the king he was the supreme ruler over egypt egypt was a very strange place it was a place of abundance it was a place of plenty it was the dense superpower of the whole world egyptians were vicious people they were intelligent in terms of science and scientology they were agriculturists they were they were warriors you you didn't stand close to a, an egyptian those days they had all kinds of mysteries they had god who would reveal secrets to them they were fierce people hallelujah so the Bible says one night the king goes to bed and he had a dream. Please follow me carefully. And behold, in that dream, he stood by a river. Next verse. Verse 2 now. And behold, there came out of the river seven well-favored. Can you give us any version just for explanation? This were cattle, calf. Any version at all that gives us a clearer explanation? And then the Bible says that... Okay, I hope Amplified will not waste our time. Okay, well-favored cows, sleek and handsome. See what Amplified does? And fat. Just give us NIV or something. I mean, Amplified now is calling a cow handsome. All right, so when we're done, then we go back to KJV. And that it went out of the river seven cows. Watch this now. The king is dreaming. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit is so intentional about the church understanding this? It goes into a king's dream to tell us what is happening. So the king is having a dream. Seven cows, sleek, fat, and the Bible says they grazed among the reeds, the grass now. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came out of the Nile and stood beside those on the river bank. And then... This is the first mystery. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. So that's dream number one. He goes to bed and he's standing by the Nile. And he sees seven fat cows. Then after that he sees seven lean cows. Are we together? And according to his dream, the seven lean cows ate the fat ones. And KJV tells you they didn't increase in size. They remained like that. Are we together? Verse 5. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. Verse 6. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. Then another mystery. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up and it had been a dream. Verse 8. Help us please. Verse 8. The Bible says that Pharaoh was troubled when you read KJV. In the morning his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians and the wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams but no man could interpret them for him. You see Pharaoh 
was a very intelligent man. He really deserved to be king. Other people will wake up and say, what a wonderful dream. Foolish cows. Thin ones are eating you and you are just keeping quiet instead of you to use the advantage of size and fight back. But Pharaoh said, no, kings don't dream for nothing. There is something in this dream. Even though I do not understand, it holds the key perhaps to the salvation of my kingdom. And he began to probe. He called the wise men. And then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, today I'm reminded of my shortcomings. Ten. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night and each dream had a meaning of its own. The Bible says now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. Be patient please. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. He was restored. I was restored to my position. And the other man was hanged. 14. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And he was quickly brought from his dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream. And no man can interpret it. But I have heard it is said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Here goes the dream again, in case you didn't read the first one. In my dream, I was standing on the bank of the Nile. Went out of the river, there came up seven cows, fat and sleek, grazing in among the reeds. Uh-huh. And after them, seven other lean cows, you know, they came. He says, I had never seen such ugly cows in the land of Egypt. Now, the dreamer is saying his own thing. The first one, it was the spirit of revelation speaking. Now, the dreamer is giving us the full weight of what he saw. That he did not see cows that lean, that ugly and vicious. The lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first. But even after they ate them, look up, no one could tell that they had done so. That means we must examine those cows. A cow that does not eat just grass, eats another cow and does not increase in size. Is that an ordinary cow? Are we together? No one could tell they had done so. They looked just as ugly as before. Then I woke up, 22. In my dream, I also saw seven heads of grain, full and good, growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads sprouted, withered and thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads. I told this to the magicians, but none could explain it to me. Wow. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, listen carefully now. The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. Pharaoh, you, you saw the same thing. The realm of the spirit was repeating a mystery for you to get. That it used different actors and scenarios. But the dream is the same. It says God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Next verse. Then Pharaoh said, Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh... Okay, 26 now. Let's go to 26, please. The seven good cows have nothing to do with animals. They are talking of seasons. That's the first revelation. Don't let the cows confuse you, he said. Uh Uh-uh. It's not about animals. It's about seasons. Are we together? The seven good cows are seven years. And the seven good heads of grain are also seven years. So, the spirit of revelation was coming to Pharaoh to teach him something about seasons. That this is not about animals. Immediately, some of you know that your interpretation of many dreams have been wrong. Just from this accurate revelation, you can see that this is a deliverance for you. Because usually, if you get up, your meaning will be around the objects of the dream. But sometimes the meaning has nothing to do with the object of the dream. In this case, that both the cows and the grain are the same thing. Time. It is one, please go back to verse 26. It says, it is one and the same dream, 27. 
The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven seasons. So are the worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. 29. Seven years of great abundance, take note, are coming throughout the land of Egypt. But seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten. And the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided. It's an ordinance and God will do it soon. Keep that scripture there. Look up please. This is a king who goes to bed and comes up with a dream. Then a young Hebrew boy is invited to his palace and he says, Oh king, this dream has nothing to do with cows, nothing to do with plants. This is a mystery in the kingdom that it talks about years. That the way the earth works, please look up, the way God designed this system to work is that there will always, always be night after day. Then there will be day after night. Hmm. Then there will be night again after day. Are we together? As far as we know, in the last 6,000 years plus, no activity on earth has sustained the power to break that law indefinitely. A few times it was manipulated. But that law was still in place. And it says, O king, even though you are a king of a great country, understand this mystery so that your relevance will remain. If you do not understand it, a day will come, nobody will remember that there was once Pharaoh seated on the throne. Look up, please. I want to share with you a very deep mystery. If you do not understand this, no matter what your achievements are today, no matter what height you rise to in life, if you cannot decipher the dream of Pharaoh, you will not last in this kingdom. The Bible tells us that the memory of the just is blessed. It's not just the mind, the thinking, the memory, that there is something about the just and God's ability to preserve his good hand and his workings upon their lives. Our life and history is full of people who did not pay attention to this dream. And whether or not you understand the dream, it does not stop what will happen from happening. Listen to me. There will always be seven years of plenty. And that after seven years of plenty, what followed was seven years of famine. And that the years of famine does not leave the years of plenty alone. That something in your future can pursue something in your yesterday and eat it up. Goodness. Why will my future not face its front and turn to the past and want to eat up your achievements, want to eat up your, the mighty things that you have done? Businessmen have broken this law. And so after building empires for years, they do not know how to last. And at the end of their life, you see them victims of the seven years of famine. It swallows up everything. Some of them are our parents. You open their CVs and you're surprised. You once went abroad? Yes, sir. You once shook hands with the then military head of state? Yes, sir. You once studied in Harvard? Yes. Where are those achievements? The seven years of famine. Please hear what I teach you tonight. Let me give you the wisdom that will cause you to last. There are sportsmen in this country who are still alive. There, were, there was a time their name was synonymous to honor and breakthrough. But they did not discern the mystery in Pharaoh's dream. And it is painful in your lifetime 
to watch the years of famine come and eat up the years of your abundance. The Bible says, Pharaoh said, no, I won't keep quiet. There is something about this dream that if I don't pay attention to understand, the end of my life may become a memorial that will not be desired. Notice what the Bible says, that the seven years of famine are so vicious, no matter the size of the cow, they can eat it up. My God! So when I look at your life, all I see is seven lean cows left. Where are the fat ones? Where are the achievements? Where are the mighty things you did in ministry? Where are the exploits in business? What suddenly happened? Africa did not know this. So when we were celebrating gold and jewelries and running around, we did not know the dream of Pharaoh was knocking. That if you do not know this today, you look at Africa and you will almost not remember that gold was taken out of here. That all kinds of things were taken out of here. There are musicians that did not know what to do with their seven years of plenty. If you mention that name, there were names in ministry, in music. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. If you mention them, they were synonymous to honor. But they did not know what to do with seven years of plenty. And right now, those vicious cows, he said, Pharaoh, what you have seen will surely happen. This is why God showed you. Hmm. Are we together? Historically in this nation, growing up we were told that there were several platforms and denominations that did great things for God. Sometimes before we were born and maybe at infancy. But the same dream came. Listen, this dream will look for every church. This dream will look for every celebrity. This dream will look for every human being. You don't have to pray. You don't have to be righteous. You don't have to be a sinner. You just have to be on earth. Once you are on earth, I guarantee you, the dream of Pharaoh is coming. Hmm. What is it about a dream that God will have to repeat it twice? Pharaoh wake up. He goes back to bed. He has the same dream again. Joseph said... What you have seen will surely come to pass. That the cows talk of times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done to everything. Is that in your Bible? To how many things? <laughs> to everything. To your desire. To your relevance. To your name. To your impact. To everything. There is a season. Now, when you read the Bible, don't read just to look for a message to preach. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Above heaven, we don't know what happens there. But under heaven, to everything. That means if you do not understand times and seasons, look up please, ladies and gentlemen. You may be well-meaning, you may be well-intentioned. But you will live the rest of your life in pain and regret. There are so many people moving around life and saying life is not fair. This is not fair. I used to be a sincere man of God. I served God with all my life. Now look at, is this the lot of a Christian they say? There are many people who say I, I did everything I knew. Why should life treat me this way? My brother, my sister, it is not unique to you. 
it is a mystery that you have not been taught. And tonight God is opening you. That it is not something unique that just looks for you. It's looking for every man. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son, and leaving your Spirit till your work. So seven years. Seven does not always mean seven. Seven just is just a prophetic representation. The lesson is that there is a law that works upon this earth. That there will always be an interplay in every man's life of seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. In ministry, it will happen. In business, it will happen. In marriage, in your family, it will happen. No matter how godly or how ungodly you are, there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will stop these seasons from happening. These are laws. Right now, is dark. It's a stupid thing to stand and be praying against darkness for no cause. Rather, you look for torchlight. And you don't buy that torchlight necessarily in the night. You buy it during the day. It was the mistake of the five virgins. They were all virgins. But the foolishness or wisdom was the issue. And the Bible says some carried extra oil. Why extra? Because they knew that there is something about seasons. And the Bible says when the bridegroom delayed, those who were innocent, all of them started sincerely. It was time that revealed who was wise. Time is a revealer. It may not create changes, but time reveals. Time reveals wisdom and time reveals foolishness. Are we, are we blessed? In the parable of the virgins, it was never lack of money. Because the foolish ones still had money to buy more. It was pure carelessness. They didn't think the bridegroom would delay that long. Because they said, go to them that sell. And the Bible says they went and they bought. When they returned, the door was closed. When you read about Noah, there was a time Noah said, rain is coming. Is it in your Bible? I'm showing you this law's working. Noah, for 120 years, he kept shouting with his wife, his sons, and their wives, Yes, rain is coming. I have built an ark that is big enough, made of gopher wood, three stories. Come, rain will come. When that rain comes, it will not look like there was anything on earth. It will not look like any plant, any shrub was ever planted on earth. And yet the people said, don't worry, Noah, you are a noisemaker. You are a stupid noisemaker. When the time came and seasons were about to change, who closed the door? Read your Bible. It was not a demon. God himself closed the door. And when the rain started, the Bible says... The heavens gave its own rain and the earth gave its own rain. If you were in the middle of two of them, you would be in trouble. And it crushed those people. The whole earth was swept in rain. There was no single green leaf that survived. It took a dove to keep checking, checking whether there was a place of refuge. It kept returning until finally it found a place of refuge. Noah was warning and saying it will not always be like this. Dear people on earth, now you have the chance. The sun is still shining. No matter how slow you are. Isn't it amazing that provided the animals were moving, God was patient. The snail would not run as fast as the cheetah. But at least they were moving. And God respected their honor to those seasons. And waited till they entered the ark. Are we together? When that door closed, it closed sincerely. Once upon a time, Lazarus and the rich man, 
the rich man had an opportunity to do certain things. He misused his opportunity. And he found himself in a place where he said, Please, Lazarus, can you dip from Father Abraham's bosom a dip of water and let me quench my thirst? And he said, No. Seasons. Seasons. Listen to what I'm telling you. Every time is not convenient for everything. If you do not discern seasons, there are times you will have every opportunity, but that door may never be there again. Now listen carefully. In every man's life, these two seasons will continue to alternate themselves for as long as you live on earth. You may not be able to stop the seasons, but we'll be going there shortly. The mystery to handle those seasons and reign through them was the interpretation of Joseph's dream. Joseph's dream was not a solution to Pharaoh alone. Joseph's dream was the spirit of revelation speaking through a young Hebrew boy to the inhabitants of the earth that regardless seasons, you are going to be able to stand I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you. I wish you can sing for me. When the oceans roar, when the oceans rise, and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the stars. Father, you are King. So I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Many couples do not know that these seasons come in marriage too. And so they are happy, enjoying themselves. Husband is happy with wife. This gentleman, this my dear people who came and testified, you saw how he didn't want his wife to fall down. Passion. <laughs> Except, this is not bad news, don't be scared, ladies and gentlemen, but that there are seasons. Every time you see a fat cow, let it remind you that there is a lean one also. <laughs> the gentleman said he got an alert. That's a fat cow. The footballer was signed to a club side that was paying him millions. He forgot his age was growing. Growing into the season of lean cows. He forgot. Oh Esther, do not forget that Vashti gave way for you to be there. If you do what Vashti did, you will shift too. But if you do what Esther did, you will still remain. I am amazed at people's lack of discernment during the first part of Pharaoh's dream. Let me tell you, the season of abundance, write this down. The seven years of plenty, write it please. The seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease. Seasons of opportunity. Seasons of access. Opportunity. The key word is opportunity. Seven years of abundance represent seasons of opportunity that according to the law of time and chance, everybody on the face of the earth According to the goodness of God, must encounter seasons in your life where things will work well. Listen to me carefully. It is more than praying for things to work well. The character of God necessitates that sometime in your life, there will be a manifestation of His benevolence, His good hand. Seven years of plenty represents seasons 
and moments of ease represent moments of opportunity. What opportunity? An opportunity to know God. An opportunity to build relationships. An opportunity to understand your assignment. An opportunity to be helped. Those are seasons of plenty. Some of you, God saved at a platter of gold. Someone went out of the way, paid your transport fare, dragged you to church, ensured that you had the message, followed up on you. Those are seasons of plenty. I assure you, it will not always be like that. There are some of you, whether you give or not, there is a harvest coming from the sacrifice of your parents. Hey, listen to me. The deception of many young people. So when we are teaching on the principles that bring these things, you say, nonsense. I just got an alert before service. 100,000 as a student. What is this guy talking about? You've forgotten that for every fat cow, there is a lean one coming. All of a sudden, at 26 years, you got a job with CBN. You got a job as a diplomatic person, receiving 300,000. Let me tell you this. The seasons of abundance have a side effect. They can give you a short-term memory. It, 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 it erodes your ability to think far. You see, when you are in the season of plenty, you can never imagine scarcity. I'm not talking of finances. Who would have imagined that a day will come where the gathering of the saints will have to be suspended for a while? You could drop on a bike and say, I don't like, I thought they would pray for the sick. Bros, see you later. And the Spirit of God is saying, use this time now. Now that you have brethren to pray, to pray with you. If you pray and you are lazy, you see someone's zeal. That zeal will cast out that spirit of laziness. You get back to prayer. While God was saying, pray that prayer. Now, please don't feel bad. You didn't know that your father was on his way transiting. The breadwinner of your family. When the Holy Ghost was telling you, now that you have the opportunity, there is a prayer department. There is koinonia. Build capacity. You didn't know that you were just two years left to be the breadwinner of your family, whether prematurely. Others will be sleeping and the Holy Ghost will say, wake up. It will not always be like this. The seasons of opportunity. Everybody is inviting you, placing a demand on your grace. You are a music artist. There are all kinds of invitations. You are a man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. There are all kinds of invitations. And you are carried away by the deception and the fame that it will always be like that. Remember Pharaoh's dream. Hmm. Business is happening. Everyone. Who would have known that one day Bill Gates will no longer be the wealthiest person? Did you know how much he was worth that time? Did you know how much Jeff Bezos was worth that time? Whenever you see the cows, I assure you, who would have known that one day the name Archbishop Benson Idahosa would be of blessed memory? If you were alive during his time and saw a man who went round the earth 53 times. A man who would keep governments down. Would you ever imagine that one day somebody would stand up to threaten the gospel? So when that opportunity was happening, the church would have established themselves. Many of our parents, there were times where land was 500 naira. Is that true? They would even allow you to start building. I said, no, 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 the earth, there's a scholarship that used to come. And the, the dream of Joseph kept coming, kept coming. I said, be careful. A time will come, this 500 naira land will be 50 million. And many made that mistake. There are denominations that made that mistake. There are families that made that mistake. There were times when the missionaries were allowing people to go to school free. They came to some of our loved ones. And said, even if you don't go, send some of your children. Say, no, 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 don't worry. I'm not sure school will be so expensive like this. Times and seasons. Can I tell you this? The pain of many people at the latter point in their life 
is because they are met with a vicious circle of change in their lives. They don't know what to do with. Some say it's an attack. Some say this is unfair. But it is the reality of the dream of Joseph. So God is telling you, my dear, build capacity in prayer right now. Oh God, just send the man first and God said, forget about the man. Pray. I'm not a prophet of doom. But you didn't know it would take you five years before your first child will come. And after year one, year two, he said, Lord, where are you? And he says, you just pray. And you found out that your prayer bank was empty. Because you replaced prayer with cosmetics. Now, I'm not, I don't feel bad. Use your cosmetic, provided it doesn't interrupt your prayer life. You are not building capacity. You are praying and fasting into realms of the anointing. And God is saying, understand warfare. Say, no, no, no. What I need is just grace. I know that with power will come wealth. He said, be careful. Demons are real. They are not looking for everybody. Build capacity. God may recommend the message of a man of all these things. I'm not interested. Suddenly you step into an anointing that you will not last 90 days. You get that anointing, you wake up with vicious marks on your body for starters. You preach in a program, you are happy delivering everybody. And then your bike doesn't take you home. And then things start happening in your life and say, Lord, am I not serving you? Listen to me. It will not equally be easy all the time. The deception that comes with the years of plenty is complacency. The deception that comes with seasons of plenty is complacency. Living for the now. Living for the now. There are many people who never believed. They knew they would retire, but they just felt one day, one day. And before you know it, retirement came. No house, no savings, no nothing. Some of you now remember when you were in secondary school. This is you today looking for a job. When you saw those many years ago, 10 years, 5 years, you were just saying, no, 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 I'm just in demonstration. I'm just in a, a model learning or one of these schools. Pray, you say, no, I'm still a child. My uncle is praying. And the Holy Ghost is saying, build capacity. And now you are in a position where you will have to trust God. Seven years of plenty will always be followed by seven years of scarcity. It is a law. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. Complacency is the mistake that people make during seven years of plenty. Some of you had people in your life years ago, there was no request that you would open your mouth and say, and they will not grant. Is that true? Some were uncles. Some were people who just loved you, like the gentleman, or the, was it the lady who was sharing here? Anything he says, someone just sent him an alert. And most people do not know what to do with those seasons. You had an uncle who was working, say, for instance, in NMPC. And God made that man to love you. What do I do for you? And say, uncle, honestly, there's one style now that is in town. I don't know if you can just give me any grants it to you. Say, what else do I do for you? And the Holy Spirit is saying, look, don't keep quiet. Your family does not have a land. They can drive them out of the house. Why don't you tell him and say, Uncle, I don't want clothes. I, I can even work for you. I don't want my father to be old without a land. And the Holy Ghost shows you in a dream. You stand up and cast it away. Seven years of plenty. Then all of a sudden you will find out, God forbid, but tragedy strikes and everybody who is a support system for you is gone. And then you begin to complain and say, God is not fair. Remember... Pharaoh's dream. There are men and women of God all around the world today. Once upon a time, their names were household names. You, you couldn't have a convention without those people. That convention is not there. 
But today, you barely can even know they were alive. I went to preach somewhere and I saw someone. I used to know that person or know about that person. And I was shocked and surprised when I saw that person in the congregation. It made me to think about my own life. It was a shadow. I've had the privilege to travel and to meet a few people who were household names in different areas. And sometimes you look at them and you cannot imagine. Have you seen politicians like that? When they won election, they didn't know what to do with the seven years of plenty. They were just sitting and elder statesmen said, we want you to become counselor. We want you to be, they don't even know how much the form costs. They just said, feel it. They became counselors and they enjoyed themselves until they lost the next election. And they reduced back to nothing. My brothers and my sisters, lay hands on your head in one minute. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, open my eyes. For the sake of my children, for the sake of my family. Don't let the devil lie to you that this message is not for you. I assure you, for as long as you are alive on this earth, one day you will need this message. Please pray. Those following online, I'd like you to pray. Lord, give me wisdom. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Write this down. Seven years of famine represent seasons of constraint. Seasons of inconvenience. Seasons of scarcity. Seven years of famine represent seasons or moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity for various reasons it can be because of age age no matter how anointed you are no matter what revelation you catch about long life the reality is for as long as you are carrying this mortal body until immortality swallows up this mortality you will not always have that energy no you can reduce your age reduce it times keep slashing it into two for as long as you're on earth a day will come you will come to that reality you want to jump the stairs like before with energy and find out that wow what is this strange breath that i'm taking i used to run marathon when when So people like Pele and people like all these athletes will sit in the stadium and watch their former self. And, and remember that free kick and remember what they did. Unfortunately, seasons are gone. Sports stars would be invited with prestige to the same stadium that they once went with honor. And now they would sit down. What of former presidents? Once upon a time, they were the voice of their territories. Everything they said became law. And now you see them moving. Some sick, some not totally whole. And they sit down and watch. Oh, there is a lesson for us to learn today. Young, beautiful lady. Look at the person who gave birth to you and learned wisdom. Once upon a time, mama was fine like you too. Are we together? Now listen carefully. Young men that jump around and will not sit down in one place and deal with their destiny. Look at the man that gave birth to you. He was more agile than you. He became serious at age 20, yet he's still trying to catch up till today. And you, you got born again at age 30. That means you need grace, mercy, speed, restoration, all these forces of, of the spirit to back you up. Once upon a time, our parents used to tell us that you could go to buy something outside. If the owner were not there, you can pick the thing and drop the money there. And they'll come and find it there. It was Bishop Fred Ado that sang a song. He said, things are not the way they used to be. The reality of time. Now you leave your khaki outside and go to ease yourself quickly and come up. 
years ago, one time, I think they, they, they parked my car somewhere. It was called um, Panteka in Kaduna. Do you know that place? I was shocked that we came out and this thing you used to tie, you know, to, 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 to yes, the tire. I, and I was in that car. How? They removed them. This is the world we live in now. Someone can say, God bless you, and your wallet is missing, your money is missing, your ATM is missing. You had a chance where everybody around your life then was a trusted person. You didn't utilize that time. Everybody who was your roommate was a prayer warrior. You didn't utilize that chance. Now, everybody in your office hates you, and you have to live there for a very long time. Seven years of plenty will always follow seven years of famine. Due to age, due to increase, increased responsibilities. Look up please. There are times that God will tell you as a man, build capacity and pray. Uh -uh. How many children do you want to have? Five children. God says, I know what five children look like. I'm the creator of the ends of the earth. Dig deep now. You refuse. And right now, you just want to pray and say, in Jesus' name, here comes your child. It's like a dream. You almost want to deny the child. And yet, he looks like you. The child wants to play with his father. But you, you want to play with your maker, and God will say, it's not an excuse. Face that child. You had a time when there was no child to distract you. You could pray for eight hours. You had no job. You had no house. You had no reputation. You could go and buy corn. Nobody would know. But now that you have become a big man, whatever you couldn't do yesterday will not be easy now again. Our society is full of regrets of all kinds. Many elderly people go to their graves in pain. There are many books written as a warning to generations coming to say, don't make the mistake I made. I had opportunities. Some people, some of our loved ones were raised by missionaries. They were the only ones who were born again at their time. And yet they still failed. How many people traveled abroad? When Nigeria passport was, was really something to talk about. They went abroad and returned like criminals after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You still see some of them in the village and they will show you pictures. And you are like, what happened? You shook hands with this person. Is that not language? They say, yes now, then it was not him. Where were you? What happened? How many people are angry today watching people on TV? I used to know him. We were classmates. Huh? We wrote, uh, uh, what they call it now, jam together. We wrote this. And they asked questions they cannot answer because seasons came and they didn't know what to do with seasons. We're establishing Pharaoh's dream. Now, the key to sustained impact and relevance, write it down. The key to sustain impact and relevance. Since it is true that seasons change and that things by themselves will never be the way they always are. We must know what to do. There is a key. And that key is in the advice of Joseph. Let's continue from where we left off. Genesis 41. Please hurry up. We still have a lot to do. Show us the ancient paths. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Will you lead us along? Eternal highway, we want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your realm. And now, now listen carefully. 
we've analyzed the problem. The Spirit speaketh expressly to the church. Now through a young Hebrew boy, Joseph. He's showing us what to do. Let Pharaoh look for a discerning and a wise man. And put him in charge of the land of Egypt. What for? Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land. And Pharaoh take a fifth of the harvest. 20%. A fifth part of the harvest during the seven years of abundance. Uh huh. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming. And store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh. To be kept in the cities for food. 36. This food should be held in reserve for the country. To be used. To be used. You will eat the food but not now. Keep it. A day will come that food will be relevant he says. To be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt. So that the country may not be ruined. I can't stop the famine. But there is a technology to make sure that even in famine, I can still eat as though there were no famine. Is that good news for someone? That there is still a way you can manipulate your way through seasons. And you will remain transgenerationally relevant. Kings will come and go. Events will come and go, but at the end of it, you are still standing. The mystery is Joseph's advice. 37. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. Uh huh. So Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man? That means the men who walk this path are scarce. It's a question Can we find these people in Koinonia? Who can manage the seasons of plenty? Can God find this kind of man in you? In whom there is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Now, the Bible tells us that he became, you know, he became in charge of all of those things. He now married, you know, Potifera, and so on and so forth. But here's the point. We're going back there later on. The point is this. Joseph gave an advice. Look up, please. He said, every time you have that harvest, there is a part of that harvest that has an ability to still be alive in the moments of famine. Take part of your fame. Take part of your energy. Take part of your access. Take part of your honor. The days when the honor is there. He says, save and invest. It's a business language. But tonight it has nothing to do with business. That you can save part of every good thing God gives you. And there is a way you can invest it. That it will go to your days of plenty. And stand there at the days of famine. That when famine comes, you will now eat out of that time. Let's go to verse 40. Let's go to 47. 41 verse 47. Now watch this. It says, during the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Uh huh. Joseph collected the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. Watch this. In each city he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. 49. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. Wise man. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. He didn't focus on calculating all the fame and the accolades. How many people fell under the anointing? How many honorarium did I get? At a point he said, look, some of these records can be dangerous. Let me focus on storing so much because days are coming. Records are good, but they can destroy you. Who am I better than? Who did I preach more than? Last week there were five preachers, but who are people saying was better? Those are records that somehow, uh, it, it, there is a healthy part of it to help you. But there is a part of it that may be, it may be destroying you. Give us that scripture again. It says, before the years of famine came 
Oh no. Uh, if you know, Ephraim and all of that. Okay, Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records of it because it was beyond measure. Keep this scripture. Let me advise you. Be careful. Make sure you do not part yourself too much and too long after the giant strides. It is good to encourage yourself. It is good to encourage those you lead. It is good to encourage those you mentor. But beware of prolonged celebration of success. It can be dangerous. It can switch you to the other side of the pendulum and become the reason for failure. When Jesus rose up from the dead, you will imagine that you would go to Potiphar's, I mean to, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name now? Herod and all those people. And say, where are those stupid people that thought I won't come back to life? No. When he came back to life straight, after doing a few things, he went straight to the disciples who were hiding in the upper room and began to teach them for the next 40 days. He didn't have time to waste. No, 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 no. I've been enthroned. No problem. The creation will celebrate me later. Is this not how champions live? As soon as they win one Olympic, while the whole world is using their face to market products and make money, they rest a bit and their coach is saying, stand up, stand up. Say, ah, coach, I just won. He said, uh-uh. Let's begin to prepare for the years that will come. Because there is, a new, there is a new competitor that was now born. Until then, you are, you are getting old, but there is a young boy. Isn't it amazing? Have you seen, just from the field of sports, notice all those who defeat champions. They are ordinary people who come with zeal. And while they are praying, their champions stand and say, no, there can't be anybody more than me. And suddenly you will see a teenager just arise and do something that will surprise them. Please give us that scripture. We are walking scripture now. 50. Okay, well, um, 51, 52. This is about the, the sons of Joseph. Let's go to 53. We're reading to verse 57. It says, The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. Leave that scripture there. Everybody, look at it. There's something about your life that is written there. Come to an end does not mean your relevance has come to an end. There are seasons. Jesus said, I must walk the walks of him who sent me. Even Jesus, when he walked upon the earth, he added timing and urgency to his life. While it is day, for the night coming when no man can walk again. The seven years of abundance. Look at me. Dear preacher. It will not always be like that, that the whole world will keep giving you invitations every day. Keep coming. It's not because you are backsliding. It's because there will always be another generation. You are not the only one God anointed. There are people who are rising too. Oh, Elijah, do not forget that there are other prophets under Obadiah's custody. They will also arise. Oh, businessman, you may be great, but one time uh, there is a Zuckerberg on his way coming. There is a Google on his way coming. Whoever knew that you have billionaires under 30 today, it was something not to even think about. Whoever knew that technology would take young people to that point, where young boys today, media is almost the new government. They can shut a president. Did you ever think like that? That a, 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 the owner of a media house can have the power To say, I use my influence and my platform and I shut your voice. The seven years of influence, the seven years of relevance came to an end. Next verse. 54. Let's walk fast please. Media help us. And the seven years of famine began just as joseph had said there was famine in all the other lands hallelujah but in joshua selman's life but in koinonia there was food so the presence of food does not mean famine is not still on it's just that something was done Mm. 
so I can do something about these seasons. The seven years of famine began. Then the lockdown began. And there was no church for five months. Then the lockdown began. And your business did not have patronage. The lockdown was not your fault, but it still happened. I told you it's a law. Then all of a sudden, your husband began to have pressure from his place of work. Because the promotion that was due him would not be given. And in reaction to that, he started bringing that attitude back home. Woman of God, what did you store for the days of famine? Suddenly, on account of your integrity, they relieved you from the job. Just when your last twins were born. Now you are watching two children plus two others that you have. And you are wondering, what do I do? I don't have money. Was money the only thing you saved? Why didn't you save relationships? Why didn't you store connections? Why didn't you store prayer? Why didn't you store the deposit of favor? What happened to these qualities? Whoever told you grains are the only things that can be invested? Are we together? It says there was famine in the land, but in Egypt there was food. When all Egypt, go back to 55, let's go there. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried unto Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go and meet the man that knows what to do. Meet the man that took advantage of my dream. So when there is famine, there are people they look for. And if you are one of those people, it is your key to remaining relevant. Not every, When there is rain, they will always look for Noah. When there is hunger, they will always look for Elijah. When there is famine, they will always look for Joseph. You remain relevant by becoming that man that people can come to when there is famine. He says, go and meet them that sell. There are people who have it. They cried unto Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, go and meet Joseph and do what he tells you to do. Two more verses. When the famine had spread over all the country, Joseph opened the storehouses. Notice. He never gave them free. I like him. Because in terms of famine, you don't give free. There is a price for those who did not obey Pharaoh's dream. Hey, look up. You can be listening to free message now. You didn't pay for anything. Yours is just to come and sit down. Ushers clean the chair. Worship team sings for you. You cough and someone is there to say sorry. Don't worry, it will not always be like that, dear ones. Receive it and consume it with all your heart. Because when that time comes, when the storehouse is open, I promise you it will not be free again. A day will come, you will listen to the same message you ignored. While there is a fight going on somewhere. A day will come you will listen to that message, but it will not be under this kind of convenience again. Once upon a time, areas of Palestine and the rest, these were places where mighty things happened. But today you want to call upon the name of Jesus on those soils. It may be at the expense of your life. A day will come you will have to pay for the food that is now free. You will pay with your time. You will pay with your energy. Listen to me. When God is telling you understand the dynamics of healing and health, you may say, what for? Pay attention to it. So that if the devil tries to bring any evil report, when you are 40, when you are 50, suddenly you begin to feel one kind of pain. And like the gentleman, they come and tell you, you have one year to live. Did you save anything for those days? You can draw from the archives of your spiritual investment. And with confidence, you can say, I, I have no business with the grave. The fullness of my days I will fulfill. Look at it. It says, Joseph opened the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians. I thought they saved it for them. 
There is no record in the Bible that Pharaoh stopped them from saving their own. And there is no record that they saved their own. They sat down, crossed their legs and said, don't worry, Joseph is saving it for us. Prayer department is praying for me. Don't worry, I know Apostle, he doesn't sleep in the night, he's interceding for me. But I assure you, the day those grains will be opened, the warehouse, there will be a cost. It will no longer be free. Are we together? Did you know once upon a time, I had so much access. I mean, people could just come any day, any time. You could meet me on the road. And today, you can imagine. Sometimes I get to pray for people and I see my own people and I'm touched. I'm looking at you, you are looking at me, but we can't touch ourselves again. There are people who God sent. They got 180 something in jam. God still gave them admission. For five years, they were roaming around ABU, loitering around until their final year. When they finally said, let me just come for this miracle service. And they graduated in tears. And some of them right now, they are where they are. And every Friday, they must buy data and listen to something they would have listened free. Their roommates today are already in ministry. Some of them already have churches and it's now they are answering the call. It's not too late, but it will not be as easy as it was. It's like going to secondary school at age 45. No knowledge is a waste, but chances are you will be sleeping. Because at that level, both your life and your mind, there are responsibilities. There is nobody in that class that should be a father, but now you are. No knowledge is a waste, but it will not come at that platter of gold. Are we together? For the famine was so severe throughout Egypt. The last verse. And let me build on some things and we pray. Read it please together. One to read. And all the countries came to Egypt to buy grain. From who? Because the famine was severe. I thought it was just Egypt. From Joseph's dream. Did he say the interpretation? Did he mention walls there? I thought it was just Egypt. So it's a law that happens to all men. Other countries who didn't have the dream still suffered it. So others were just eating. They didn't know that it was one year left for famine to start. And famine came. And all of a sudden, the kings would call themselves and say, we are dying. Buy us. Money has failed. All of a sudden, news started going and said, there is a young Hebrew boy in Egypt. There is so much abundance in Egypt. And they started running. The Bible says, Gentiles will come to your light. Are you seeing now? And their kings, because of the extent of the famine, they will discern that it is true men are saying there is a casting down. But I don't know what is happening to this group of people. For them, it looks like there is a lifting up. That when people are saying, God, what shall become the lot of our lives? You are giving and you are blessing. When you are 50 years, you will say, I know God more now than I did even in my youth. I have more time for Him now. And they say, why is your life like this? You say, because I was taught the mystery of Pharaoh's dream. When the Lord taught me this mystery, I got down my knees and I cried before him and I said, Thank you, Lord, for your love for me. I have found the key. I have found the key. Our fathers turned their back and allowed us to see their scars. And now that we have been privileged to see it, we can know that by the grace of God, we will rise, we will remain, and at the end of time, even with honor, it will be that the name of the Lord continues to be lifted in and through our lives, whether we are here or not. Transgenerational relevance. There was something Jesus did that even though it's been ages, the name of Jesus still continues to be lifted. You will go to countries and even at the edge of a sword, there are people who would stand and pledge for him. What happened that the name cannot go down? What, what did Jesus do? I, yeah, I want to show you something now. What happened? Because if you do that same thing, for some of you, the name of your family will remain forever. Do you know there are families that the moment 
maybe the children get married, the name, the honor, name there does not just mean the, the title. There was an honor that was upon the families, but they did not know what to do. And right now, it is shame, it is reproach. I rebuke that over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. What do you do during seasons of opportunity? Let me give you four keys. How to maximize your seven years of abundance. Number one. What do you do during seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number one, build capacity. Spiritual capacity. Intellectual capacity. Build capacity. The days of abundance are not days of over-celebration. The days of abundance are not the days to be carried away by the flatteries of men. I've told you, there is a weakness in men. There is something that honor does to us. There is something that celebration does to us. When you become a superstar or you aspire to become a superstar, I am telling you there is a side effect. The side effect is that it makes us short term in our memory. We, we fail to think. Show us the ancient paths. Will you lead us along? Eternal highway, we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to build capacity. Now that you have time, now that you have someone giving you pocket money, now that you are still employable, you have not retired yet. It looks like you have 25 years left. It looks like you have 20 years. You have 15 years. You have 10 years. 10 years looks like a lot of time until you see what comes with it. That's the time to build spiritual capacity. You are praying. You are a student, for instance, you still have time. There's no reason to go and be celebrating nonsense and be wasting your time. No. The little time you have, you are studying. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. You are listening to teachings. You are spiritualizing your mind. You are getting materials, buying books, not shoes, not clothes. Leave those things. They will follow you where you are transformed. Focus on your transformation. The money that young people waste on useless things. Things that have no profit as far as the future is concerned. If you can be patient, that money, multiples of it will look for you a thousand times. The days of abundance are not the days to look for invitation. I am a music minister. Please invite me. I am a man of God. God called me to be an apostle and a prophet. Be patient. There are so many sermons you are going to preach in your life, you will need grace. Go right now and be obtaining the grace. Don't be running around looking for the invitation. Build capacity. Build capacity. That's what you do during times of abundance. Build capacity. Capacity to last. Capacity to defend the grace that is now given to you. Get knowledge. Get knowledge. Don't be a local champion. Get knowledge. Number two, what do we do with our seasons of opportunity? Number two, build relationships. Oh, write that in capital letter. Write that in capital letter. Build relationships. Productivity and fruitfulness are relational. What betides you if you do not have anybody to help you during your season of famine? There are families today. Everything they eat is what they work for. Everything they wear is what they bought. Everywhere they go, they go is where they took themselves to. No, no, no. It should not be like that. Relationships are powerful. They are advantageous connection. They are systems of leverage. There has to be somebody in your life who likes you enough to be able to invest their time, their reputation, their credibility on your destiny. Are we blessed? Yes, sir. Uh. 
I don't have capital. Capital is not the only thing. Relationships can pay. I met a gentleman one time and he told me something. He said, I don't know what one of these schools in Africa. And he said that he had been looking for school fees to, to collect his certificate accumulated. I think their school, they allowed them to pay to steal school like student loans. And he needed a total of, let's say, three to five hundred thousand to go and collect his certificate since 2016. And while he was telling me, he sounded sympathetic. And I told him, from 2016 till today, didn't you have classmates? Didn't you go to church? Did everybody fail who you used to know? You mean nobody out of the hundreds of people that God gave you the privilege of relationship with. You did not bless anybody enough to remember you. There are people, what is 300,000? What is 400,000 for someone? It is painful to know someone who is not willing to help you because you trivialize relationships. Hear me, dear ones. Some of you will be in departments. Some of you will be in your faculty. You will see people whose shoes are not, are not something to write home about. And you ignore them. You are looking for only your tribesmen. You are looking for only those you used to know. And yet your heart is not open to discern what God is doing. A few years down the line, those people will be CEOs and multi-millionaires. You will not evolve out of somewhere and come and say, bless me. Based on what? There are so many people today claiming portions of people's success is based on, my father used to know you. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Build relationships. Relationships are costly investments. It will cost you your ego. It will cost you your time. It will cost you your sacrifice. Can I tell you this? There are people who will never suffer in this life as far as this life is concerned. If they don't give their life to Christ, for instance, except they go to hell. But as far as this life is concerned, they, they have connected themselves to too many people who will never forget them. Oh, 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 I was so happy to see him. How are you? Greeted me. We exchanged pleasantries. What are you doing now? So, this and that. I said, really? And then I remember. I said, no, 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 no. You shouldn't be in this position. Cut the long story short. God lifted that person and exalted that person overnight. There are some prayers you will not need to pray if you understand relationships. Did you hear what I said? Believe me. Believe me, I know what I'm telling you. It's a covenant. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? There are some of us, the way you are going with your life now, the truth is that you have already secured the destiny of your children. People will love you too much. Every time they see you, they remember the quality of your relationship. And they will say, over my dead body. There are people today who will never be stranded of house rent. There are people today, even if you decide to be lazy, your relationship has placed you on honor and salary forever. May you be like that this night. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you because some of you are in your seasons of abundance now. Everybody likes me. Think well now. In light of what I'm teaching. It's a window that will not always be open. You invest in relationships. The person will remember the day that he came late. And you got up and said, please sit down. Ah! No, no, no. I came late for Koinonia. No, sit down. I can't stand. You will think he has forgotten you. You will just carry 20% of your time and invested it. Are you seeing now? Yes, sir. After Koinonia, someone is going home, broke, and the Holy Ghost tells you it's just 70 naira. Please pay for bike for this man. Sir, can I pay for bike for you? I don't know you. Who are you? No, Koinonia here, just to bless you. And you pay that 70,000, uh, that 70 naira, and you don't know that that 70 naira is an estate you just paid. After 10 
years, he will see you and your wife and your children. Listen to me. And he will say, I remember you. Sheung, are you not the one in, you say, Zari, I say, what are you doing now? I say, well, God is faithful. He say, come, God has helped me today. Please come, let me give you one place. I'm giving you, listen, this, this wisdom key will bless you for the rest of your life. There are some of you, you are not represented in anybody's story. Anybody's story. Nobody can make reference to you to say you prayed for me. While I was looking for someone to pray for, you were there. You were not there. While my child was crying, 10 naira, uh, what, what they, this thing they give children? Um, Bobo. You did it, you just watch the child. How, why do children cry like this? You are subtracting. Let me tell you what you are doing. Listen, listen, listen. Take me very serious. You are subtracting from the years of abundance. You hear someone is getting married, God gives you 100,000, you can't take 10,000 and say, look, just to bless you. Can I tell you, when you make efforts to sincerely be friendly from a pure heart, you are making investments for your tomorrow. There is something that being blessed does. It gives you the ease to be a blessing. And not everybody will struggle forever. The person you are seeing who cannot eat today, tomorrow you will get to a point where well to become like, like the sands of the seashore. And at that point, all that will be left is who do I need to bless? Not will I bless. There are people today, every day, they are giving houses in this country. There are people giving jobs in this country. No interview. There are some of us, the names of our parents are keys. It can open any door. There are some of us, the names of our parents are padlocks. They look at your name. And say, which one? It's alright. Uh, you go, you will hear from us. And yet you are a first class student. You must make up your mind that your name will become a key to your child. There are children today who are head boy, head girl, regard, even if they are not taking first position. Because something about the relationship of their father and the principal is his school. He can do whatever he wants to do with his school. Look at me. Who is in your life now sincerely helping you? Why do you have to call people before they help you? Calculate your age. Who sees you as what he's, he's helping today? There are many preachers. They love God. They are born again. They focus on God, but they ignore men. You pay for the speaker yourself. You pay for the keyboard yourself. You are getting married. Even the committee of friends, they come together and you have to pay them again. What sort of a, a, a human being are you? No. Make up your mind from tonight that you are going to invest in relationships. You don't need many, but the few that you have. Your roommates may be there. You are the only person who is privileged among them. Keep hiding your food. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. Are we together? Keep washing your plates alone. You don't know what you are doing. Don't, don't follow all this nonsense that people do in films and movies. It would destroy you. Those people are acting. Go through the sacrifice now. Look like a fool now. There is a kind of business where you don't sell anything. You give like a mad person. But the returns are guaranteed. It's the business of men. Your roommate comes back with five carryovers. As if he returned from a funeral. You are the first to say you are an embarrassment to redemption. You continue. He will remember you in the future. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. One day you will be a doctor. It's all right. Things happen in life. And regardless what it is, don't worry. Where will I get the last school fees now? I'm in final year. I'm having to steal over. My father will kill me. Look, there's a little scholarship I used to collect. It's not much. It's 100,000. I can spare 20,000 from it. It may not do you much, but let it encourage you. You did this for me from a sincere heart. After 10 years... Your 20,000 has grown into honor. As that man rises, your 20,000 makes you rise too. You never knew your 20,000 was a living thing. I show you why many people never rise. 
Look at great men. For some of you who have had the privilege to work with great men, their lives are purely based on history and based on relationship. Look at politicians. There are sons and daughters today who become governors, who become senators, not because of any capacity. I remember you. They were about to shoot me in 1981. I remember. And they laugh. Retired generals. And they are all laughing. So what are you doing now? My son wants to get this. Oh, don't worry. Hello, sir. We found the person. Please give this person. And you are there praying. And your prayer request right on earth, right in your presence, was given to someone. May God deliver us from ignorance. See, as I'm talking to you now, there are some of you, you are seeing why you hate your family. Don't hate your family, but learn from the mistakes. They had opportunities. And yet they wasted it. They insulted everybody around them. You had a house help. The house help wake up by five. You had names that you would give her. Stupid girl, where are you? Ma, she will come. Whereas that's the person who would deliver you in old age. And the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do this. She will come, madam, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw you crying in the future. Is You are the witch that this thing... Mm -mm. You beat the girl and it's, it's remnants of food you give her. There's a special plate. Plates that they gave her souvenir for wedding. Where are you? Oh, yeah, come and take your own. And the girl is eating with gratitude. And you do not know that time and chance happens to them all. One day, one correct born again man who fears God with fire and wealth will now come and not even see your children. Will now see that one and say, I like this one. Say, sorry. Um... I'm not sure you know what you are saying. There are others say, no, I, my heart has seen what I like. We die here. Who we'll carry, listen. I spoke about relationship and you are now excited for nothing. Sit down. Are we together? God will use that man to carry that young girl and wipe the tears of her generation, not just her family. Whereas someone likes you and says, tell me about your mother. I've had that story before. So she's the one. I will never marry you till Jesus comes. Why must we do this kind of thing for ourselves? There are some of our loved ones who had the opportunity to give jobs to people. Did they give them jobs? No. They were in positions where they would have the names of hundred people. They didn't help anybody. Until one day stroke hits them. And now the company had to retire them. Why do you want people to bless you when you didn't raise anybody? Don't you know when you raise people, it's a cushion for your own self. There are music artists today who did not raise anybody. They ate alone. As God was lifting them, other younger ones were coming and saying, listen to my song. You say, what is this? I received it by the Spirit. You know, it's not the Holy Ghost that gave these kind of songs. Instead of you to encourage the person, don't worry. You can rise. Listen to me. I want to open your eyes tonight to see that some of you, what you are doing is that you are not investing your 20% for the years that are coming. There is nobody in your life who you bless intentionally. You are just expecting people to bless you. No. We have many children in Koinonia here. Which one have you ever bought something and told the mother, be blessed? We have many people in school here, young people. Some of them, their school fees is 1,000, 2,000. You see, the, the foolishness we do, Valentine comes, you see people acting like fools. They do all kinds of things. Waste money that even the girl's parents have never given her. And yet there are people here. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm waking you up. There has to be someone who will tell you this thing. Fake lives for nothing. You are a student. You are dressing like a CEO. You are not there. <laughs> Buying expensive things whereas you would have used that money. Buy five books on prayer. Find people that you see God already lifting them. Sir, this is, I thought this would bless your life. One day you are in a restaurant and you see someone arguing, almost getting embarrassed because of 10 naira. Show up quickly. That's an opportunity for an investment in the future. And say, sir, don't worry. 
I don't know you, but I've seen your face coming on. Ah, oh, really, please. Let me have the honor to bless you. You sit down in the car. You just get an alert of 10,000. And the transport fare is just 200 naira. An opportunity to sow into your life. By the grace of God, this is one thing I did with my life. And I thank God for it today. Because the person who may not be able to help you yesterday, certainly will be able to help you tomorrow. Is God blessing us? Let's hurry up. What do you do with your seasons of opportunity? Number one is build capacity. Number two is build relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives. I think I already stated that. Acts chapter 9, please, quickly, just to add scriptures to it. Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives. This is what you should do with your seasons of abundance. Selflessly, the word, the key word is selfless. Selflessly invest. Let me tell you this. During your seasons of plenty, forget about yourself. Be of less important, less importance. Pour your heart into people not because you are expecting something in return sincerely pay the price to build people pay the price to be part of the stories of people sits on the throne acts chapter 9 from verse 36 help us media we're reading to 42 now watch this Peter came to a place in Joppa. The Bible says in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. Look up please. Which when translated is Dorcas. The Bible says who was always doing what? Talk to me please. She was always doing good and helping the poor. She had an opportunity. She never allowed the poor like that. She did good and she helped the poor. 37. About that time... Aha, uh -huh. here you have come again. Time. She became sick and died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. 38. Leader was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Leader, they sent two men to him and urged him, Come please at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, look at this, look at this, look at this. When he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. Hallelujah. Look at those who gathered. All the people she invested in. All the widows stood around him, doing what? Crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made for them while she was still with them. While that woman was alive, she would not see poor people go like that. I may not have much, but let me add a smile to you. When she died, the widow said, no way. No way. They stood and said, Peter, do something. The widows provoked his anointing. And they said, this woman, who will now do it for us? This was the woman who was there for us. May you have someone who speaks for you. Oh. May you have someone who speaks for you. In the name of Jesus, may you have someone who can speak for you. And bring to remembrance what you have done for the kingdom. Peter, provoked by their tears. He sent them all out of the room and he got down on his knees. He didn't stand to pray this kind of prayer. He knelt down and turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes. Kebala Subranda Kaskubiata. She would have died like that and he would have finished. But something about her investing in lives. He said, I shall not die but live and declare. There is a way you are so useful to kingdom come. That it's not only God that will pray for your longevity. Men too will say, may God leave you for us. Can I tell you this? Help them please. Listen, there are people today, look at me. There are people today, the goodwill of men is almost like prophecy on their lives. Do you know that goodwill carries power? Whether born again or not. The woman that fries Akara, her blessing is on you. The one who sells bread, his blessing is on you. My mother, you do not know her blessing is on you. Then there is the prophetic blessing on you. Then there is one who you visited during your birthday. This, this myriads of blessings, you think they don't matter. 
one boss man somewhere may not be born again, but he told you, let it be well with you. I tell you, heaven honors it. There are people who, when you see them rise, it's not just a product of their personal work with God alone. They are surrounded by the goodwill of people. Learn this lesson. Tapita. No, you can't go like that. Who then will feed the widows? My life today, by the grace of God, is surrounded by intercessors all over the world. Some who have been called by God and others who are benefactors of things by His grace that I have done for them. Who have vowed in life. Let me tell you this. There are people today, if you carry a gun to kill me, not everybody. But there are people who will stand and receive it and die first. It is over their dead body. May you have such people in your life. It does not happen by being a man of God. It happens through the sacrifice of investment. If Baba Deboye today lifts his hand and says, People, my car just spoiled. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Many car stands will be emptied because one man who grew with a generation passionately pouring his heart to them. A life of selfishness, let them do it for me, is a recipe for pain in the days that are coming. I remember many years ago, I went to preach somewhere, and I saw that the ministry was struggling, really struggling. And they put together a little honorarium, and I knew that these people don't have this capacity. Probably they borrowed money just to show honor. I called the pastor and his wife. I told them, I said, look, I thank you. They were crying. I said, I love you people. I just came to bless you. I didn't come to receive money. I know that you people are working, and the Lord gave me an instruction. I sowed a dangerous seed for them, prayed for them, and told them, may God bless you. Till tomorrow, those people... My, my song is on their lips. Sometimes they send me text message and they identify themselves as people who I bless. This is more than maybe 10 or 11 or 12 years ago. Who remembers you for what you have done in their lives? Where are the widows that remember what you are doing for them? Some of you, even your family members can't, re can't remember you because you've not done anything for anybody. It is time for change. Are we together? Number four, what do you do during your seasons of abundance? Listen, the fourth thing you do is study those who have maintained relevance through seasons. That's the fourth thing you do. Study. Study those who have maintained relevance. While you have the time, while the dark days have not come, pay the price. Study those who have gone ahead of you, who have survived seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience. Follow them. Hebrews 6, 12. It says to follow them who through faith and patience. Go back to KJV. Have obtained the promise. A man who is celebrating 40 years in ministry, celebrating 35 years in ministry, 45 years in ministry, even if that person was playing, I think you can't play for 35 years. You can't play for 45 years. Herein lies the arrogance of our generation. We insult people who have gone ahead of us. We downplay the sacrifices of successful people. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, Do not talk about anybody's results until you have twice that result. There are people who have not built anything. They have not raised anybody in their lives. But there is no man of God they will not talk about all across the globe. No. It ought not to be so. Years ago, when I used to counsel, when I used to do counseling, I remember a man who came and uh, a, he was talking and they brought one young boy and the boy was just lambasting his father in my presence, like trying to be bold to say the father has been irresponsible. And the father just kept quiet to respect me as though, look, the boy is telling the truth, it's not my fault. And I was just watching the young boy, just shouting and talking the rubbish. And I asked him a question, I said, young man. 
Have you ever saved any amount for your school fees? And he kept quiet. At his age, there are many people in the world who are changing nations and changing their cities. And he's there, he's never raised even 1% of the school fees. And yet he cannot honor the man who at least is trying. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was counseling someone years ago, very funny, funny incident. And um, I think the person had two children or so. And then at the point he said, do you know what it means to raise two children? Do you know the financial implication? And I looked at the person with compassion in my heart. I said, if I tell this man how many families, not children, by the grace of God and by the privilege of God's mercy, probably in his entire lifetime, in many lifetimes put together, he may not come close to it. And here is me giving him a kind advice with all due respect. And he's almost dying because of two children. And now I'm telling him there is a way to go about it. And he's arguing. How many poor people don't listen to people who God has helped? They invent their formula and argue and tell you it's not the way. And yet the person is, is struggling, suffering, giving excuses. Respect results. And respect people who God has honored to get results the kingdom's way. Are we together? Study them. Study them. One of the fathers of faith that I met recently, we had a very long discussion with him. And when we had a long discussion with him, he finished talking to me, advised me, and do you know how I felt? I felt like somebody who was moving from nursery school to primary school. I really felt, not false humility, I could see so many things I did not know. And yet, I'm someone who is very passionate for knowledge. I was not afraid for myself again. I was afraid for many people who will not listen. I said, oh boy, these people have lost it until the God of heaven shows mercy. You know, in your world, you will always think you know until you see a horizon that is higher than that. I don't mean to brag, forgive me if I do. But I remember years ago, when I used to teach people on the secret of church growth, a lot of people used to say so many things. People then said it's because he's leading students, it's because he's doing a lot of things. They are just young people who are sympathetic to him. I said, what are you saying? This is scripture. If you have it, you have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Don't argue with results. Just hold that gently. Don't force out that little girl. Remember what I taught you. You drag that lady carelessly. Tomorrow you have a lot to pay for. She will remember you. You think she will forget you. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. I will trust. Let's wrap up. Luke chapter 16. Let me show you one person who utilized these seasons very well. Luke chapter 16. Very quickly, please, from verse 1. And the disciples, and he said unto his disciples, Look up, please. There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So the rich man was angry at his steward. <laughs> And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be steward. Verse 3. And then the steward said to himself, Jesus is teaching now, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig, and to beg I am ashamed. So what is his strategy? I am resolved what to do that when i am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses you hear the man thinking now 
Jesus is teaching. Verse 5. What did he do? <laughs> he called every one of his Lord's debtors. And said unto the first, How much owest thou you, my Lord? Verse 6. And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said, Take the bill. Sit down quickly and write 50. Watch what this guy is doing now. The wisdom. This is somebody who is not born again. He has seen trouble come and he knows that ah, if they drive me from this estate, I don't have anything. So let me quickly do something with these relationships. And he said to another, how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take thy bill and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Now, God was not teaching to cheat. He was just saying the man had sense. To know that he could lean on those relationships because seasons were about to change in his life. Are you getting the morale now? He commanded the, he commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Nine. And I say to you, make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail they shall receive you into everlasting habitations what this means is not teaching you to go after money or go after all of these things the idea is that use your seasons of plenty as a leverage the moment you have fame you have blessings they pay you your salary you get some arrears don't eat everything alone remember to edge your impact in someone's life so that tomorrow you can have people who can stand by you stand with you support you support your family and help you if all you have in your life is your intellect if all you have in your life is your salary if all you have in your life is your business if all you have in your life is you and yourself you'll be in trouble in today's world hallelujah You now understand what God was doing when he told us that we will not sell our teachings. Now please, you're a pastor here. I'm not saying don't sell tapes. That's not what I'm saying. But this is a painful instruction. At the time God gave this instruction, the media ministry was the major, one of the major income generating revenues for ministries at that time. Books and this, aside from offerings and tithes. So that was a suicidal project. I know the quality of the things that I teach by the Spirit. Why would we not sell them to at least generate some revenue for the ministry? And God said, no, it shall not be that way. Put it online and let people have it free. And I said, so be it. My God, my God, fast forward. Whatever God tells you, Ba, He doesn't tell you for today. He tells you for your 10 years, for your 20 years. That's why I call it an investment. There are nations today... There are people today who forever for the rest of my life, the lifetime of this ministry, and many who are connected to this grace, there are certain levels you will not go lower than again. You do not know the extent of the impact that these teachings have brought for people. Obedience. Selflessly giving yourself to the Lord. Lamentations 3. 27 as I conclude the Bible says it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth that means there is timing for everything bear your yoke now go through the sacrifice now I love you that's why I'm sharing with you this truth examine your life now the idea of me, myself, it is only me and me and me alone is a recipe for disaster and destruction. And let me tell you this. If you go and start selecting people to bless because you want something in return, you will be surprised that that harvest will still not come. The harvest comes not just on the basis of giving, but the sincerity of your heart. If I give you something today because I'm expecting you to remember me tomorrow, it's a joke. That, that is business. That's not love. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of people who continue to bless my life, bless the ministry today. Apostle, thank you. You came to our campus when I was a student. I remember 
years ago, I went to pick my, my card from one of the embassies and um, I was just to sit down to do my biometrics. And the gentleman who was sitting in front of me, as soon as he saw me, he was almost shaking. He said, good afternoon, sir. I said, ah, somebody knows me here again. This is an embassy. And he said, sir, I have something to tell you. Remember you came for a crusade in our campus. So, 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 yes. That was where I got born again. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't even do anything again. The gentleman ran around, did everything, and I said, oh, dear. Yet, that is somebody's prayer request. One day you will go somewhere and someone will establish his business and say, you may not know me, but you blessed me. You preached. I remember it was under your ministration that I got born again. I covenant with God that 10% of all my profits will be for you and your children forever. You will think that the 10% is 10,000 until you see what comes the first month. And you say, this is how it will be, oh. For the rest of your life. Jesus said. In John 9 verse 4. I must walk the walks of him that sent me. While it is day. For the night cometh. When no man will walk again. Some of these my dear people you see. They make sacrifices every week. I'm sure you see them. They are here and then Sunday they are in Abuja again and then they return, they are coming, then they are rushing, then they are coming. It's a sacrifice. I have eight sessions of ministration from this night to Monday. Eight. I thought I would be able to have some time with the school of ministry students at least just to say hello. But first thing in the morning I'm out of this place. Why am I doing these things? Number one, love. Number two, sacrifice. Make sure your life is counting for something beyond you. Listen to what I just said. Make sure your life is counting for something beyond you. Beyond you. This gentleman is standing behind the camera. It's a lot of sacrifice. You see that? And he was one time the best school of ministry student in one of the years. And when he's done with all these things... Is part of those who will be rushing down to Abuja to help the students with their registration process. These are sacrifices that people make all the time. What are you doing? Don't sit down and say, Apostle, pray for me. Let people be doing it for me. No. It is always my joy to see that my life becomes a blessing. And I told myself, it is not because I'm expecting anything from anyone. But it is with all my heart. Today I'm humbled and many times in the secret I just shed tears of joy. Seeing what God has used this life today to do to the nations. I, I completely forgot that yesterday was 11th. It was people that reminded me that you are aware that it's 11th March. I said, well, I just, can you imagine? Because I was focused on impact, not records. Records. That you are so diligent you can almost forget your birthday. It's those who have impacted who will force you to remember. There are people who, who will ask God that one year to the time, honor me. No, something is wrong. Remember my, my, I'm five years in the Lord. Who have you blessed five years in the Lord? Five years in the Lord, is that young? With the influence of the Holy Ghost, mentorship and the word. Five years if you were, if you were diligent. In five years, you should have done much for the kingdom. Let me ask you a question. Who did you bring for Koinonia now? Who will thank you after ten years? There are many of these are young people now who just got admission. Some of you just pass them, you climb a bike. I'm on my way to edify my spirit. Keep doing it. You will, in the years to come, you will see that when these days, those ugly cows come, they will eat up everything you have done. I will never waste an opportunity to build capacity. I will never waste an opportunity to build quality destiny relationships. I will never waste an opportunity to selflessly pour my life blessing people. Listen, this appetite for fame, this appetite for a name, kill it in the name of Jesus and focus on being a blessing. 
Focus on being a blessing rather than having your face behind those things. God who sees what you are doing, both in secret and open, will reward you openly. There are families today that lift up the name of the Lord and call upon the names of some of us because of what we have done in their lives, day and night. Can your parents call upon God for your sake every day? To say, Lord, remember this our daughter. Remember this our son. There's an old hymn that says, Must I go and empty handed? It says, Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty handed go? Are you living your life just for yourself? Where is my husband? Where is my job? Where is my money? Where is my destiny helper? When will you be all that to other people? Some of us are so self-centered, we are not even aware of the degree of self-centeredness. Money is useless until it lives for a cost bigger than you. Anointing is useless until it's dispensed for a cost bigger than you. Fame is useless until it's dispensed for a cost bigger than you. Listen to me. Influence is useless. Knowledge is useless. Until you can live for a cause that is bigger than you. For some of you, God is challenging you. You are already a worker. You are on salary. One day you can look at a patient and it's just 3,000. And the Holy Spirit can tell you, pay that bill. You don't have to know the person. You reap what you sow, not where you sow. Apostle, I don't have much. That's why you may never have much. Because it's not in your heart. Hallelujah. He pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart. He'll always be with us. I can't even remember it. There's peace and contentment in serving the Lord. I love you for better. You've forgotten it. I'll serve you more truly than ever before. I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cause. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die. Mm. These were men who did not write these things for money. They wrote it sincerely. It was the contemplation of their hearts. Two prayer requests tonight. One, you will be seated. The other, you will stand up. The first, we, our time is gone. It's going to be both a reflection and a prayer. Think about your life in one minute while you pray. Am I living my life maximally? Please think. Don't look around. Sincerely. You are 25 now. You are 30 now. You are 40 now. You are 45. In the next 10 years, you will be plus 10 of your current age. In the next 20 years, you will be plus 20 of your current age. Apostle, I'm only 15 years. Dear one, in the next 15 years, you will be 30. Apostle, I'm 40. In the next 20 years, you would have spent 60 years on earth. Please pray. Talk to the Lord. Talk to your maker. Lord, I am tired of living a visionless life, a profitless life. Things have to change. The dream of Joseph, again, and the dream of Pharaoh is sweeping across the earth. Asking people to remember that for every season of relevance, every season of abundance, every season of opportunity... There will be seasons of constraint. There will be seasons of lack. It is what you do. Tonight you are hearing the voice of the Spirit. Heed to the advice of Joseph. It was not an advice. 
and a counsel for just Egypt. A day will come, the person who supports you today may not be there. A day will come, the person who may be the breadwinner may not be there again. A day will come, your certificate will be limited, I tell you. A day will come, your spirituality as powerful as it is, you will need more to it. It is what you do with the moments now. Those following from around the world and the many who will be hearing this no matter how long it takes. Be wise. Be wise. It says, so then teach us to number our days that we may spend and apply our hearts unto wisdom. Do not destroy your opportunities. Be wise. Do not destroy your moments. Hear me. There are moments that when they pass you by, they may never come back again. You have the opportunity to bless your parents now while they are alive. Don't trivialize their presence. A day may come, they may not be there again. You have the opportunity to have a spiritual family that so loves you and will commit their hearts to your growth. Don't trivialize them. Days may come, you may not find them again. Our time is gone, but pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet for the last prayer point. How do as it please me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier, I'll die at my post. One of the wisest decisions that I made in my life was to love God with all my heart and pursue Him passionately and sincerely. The next was to pursue knowledge, to pursue wisdom. The next was to understand men and to pay the price to be a sincere contributor to the growth, the lifting, the rising of many without expecting anything in return. Not for the purpose of making a name. That's politics. I made up my mind that if in the course of serving His Majesty, I pass on to be with the Lord, so let it be. At least let it be that I did my best. We are not called to do everything, but we are called to do our best. I know our time is gone, but you are standing and looking at me. Forget about the face. Hear the voice of the Spirit. God is telling some of you, you are making the exact mistake that parents made, that uncles made. In your world, it is only you. In your world, it is only your comfort. In your world, it is only your pleasure. Provided it does not affect you to hell with anything that is going on in the world. It is just me. I'm the one who collects. Let the applause be to me. Let the name calling and the honor, let it be to me. No. Nobel Prize is not given for those who take from the world. It is for those who give. Are you ready to pray? Lord, make my life count. Make my life relevant. I heed to the dream of Pharaoh. Someone pray. Let me not go through the pain of neglect. As a man of God, the Spirit of God is speaking to you already. As a businessman, the Spirit of God is speaking to you already. Please pray. Please pray. You are not wasting your time tonight. For I spoke a word. 
you are singing over me. Make sure you are praying. You are being so strong. Think of your children while you pray. Born on born. Someone is praying. Make a covenant with your destiny tonight. life will count. I will live for a cause bigger than myself. I will utilize my seven years of abundance, my years of influence, my times of opportunity. I will not waste them in pride. I will not waste them in self. I will use those years to build capacity. I will use those years to build relationships. I will use those years to selflessly pour my heart for the lifting of others, for the rising of others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Put your hands together. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a nekata. The face of development. Lord, grant me 